nickname on shows has been Oaf. Been what? Oaf. Oaf? Because I am such an Oaf as a person. I don't know what an Oaf is. Or Hodor, that was my other nickname. Hodor? Hodor, you know, like from Game of Thrones. Oh, I don't watch it. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. It's gone down a treat, hasn't it? I just go to the theatre too much. <laughs> Box set. <laughs> exactly. I'm go who got, who's got time for that? <laughs> Too busy seeing everything you're in. True. You get around, don't you? I do. Try. You ever stop? Uh, stop now for a bit. Have you? A couple of weeks. Two weeks. Well, a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. Holiday. I've got like bits in between, like the gigs and the the ship. That'll be fun. Yeah, the ship of dreams. <laughs> the ship of dreams. You'll be drinking lots of tea on that. I I'm will. Sure. Yeah. Tell me about it. So it's the. Uh, Floating Festivals ship, Stages, yes. is this one, which is basically a, a week-long musical theatre-themed four days. cruise. Yeah. Yeah. Four, yeah, four, four nights. Four, four nights, days, yeah. one day in Dublin. Yeah. And so we're just doing various different Crazy concerts liner. and things. I know. It's amazing. So like Mark. Alfie Bow, Sheridan Smith. There's loads of, pe Rachel loads of people doing it. And then there's people doing talks like Paul Taylor Mills and Paul Wooler. And, and, there's, like, and then there's me. Me, Steph Parry, Emma Housley and Luke Bayer doing a Rodgers and Hammerstein yeah. concert. Avenue Q are on there as well, aren't mm -hmm. they? Yeah. Doing a full show. Yeah. And my mum, my mum and dad are coming on the cruise. Are they? Because my mum's really excited about it. And my dad, yes, my dad, I think, might throw himself overboard. By the end of it. By the end of it. But there's t she sent me the email and there's themed nights. So the first night is like, black tie and tiara or something like that and then another night is you have to come as a musical th a character from musical theatre <laughs> nice i've told my mum she has to come as norma desmond oh do it yeah absolutely i just wanted to get a turban that should be bad yeah um so do you perform every night do you know i, I actually i'm not you sure don't know no i'm not sure um i know we're doing we're doing kind of two two various things we're doing the rogers and hammerstein concert and then we're also having to do uh, they're doing like uh, seminar things and I know some of us are singing in the Sondheim se seminar so yeah. I think they'll obviously discuss so particular songs or techniques that he's used and things like that and then we are we'll sing examples of that Ooh, that's cool which yeah it sounds interesting um, so I don't know if that sort of alternates yeah. with the Rodgers and Hammerstein gig or whether we're kind of a daily kind of thing obviously the headliners will do their like main night I think yeah. um, so I'm not sure, I still don't really know. Sounds like fun now. Yeah, yeah, it'd be great. And it's on a lovely cruise ship, so massive cruise ship as well. Yeah, you've never done cruise ships before, have you? No, never. Career. No, I've, I've been on them on holidays, because yeah. my, my grandparents used to go a lot on cruises, because um, my grand wouldn't fly. So uh, I've had experience of cruise ships, but never as a performer on them. Hmm, oh. so interesting. I'm so jealous. <laughs> Where's the Wilmers on it? I didn't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm invited to next year's, apparently. Oh, right. Well, see, get on. Yeah. Get on it. I will come. But not to see. You'll have to do it again. Well, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know if... So I guess it depends how well this goes on the yeah. ship. We might be able to make something of it and do a little kind of cabaret of it. I don't know. Just kind of got to see what, what it entails. We've not kind of been given the songs or anything yet. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to wait and see, <laughs> see what it's like. I mean, you mentioned Steph Parry there, so you, yeah. you're good mates, aren't you? Yeah, I me and Steph her. did 40 Seconds Straight together when she famously ran down the road <laughs> to do Mamma Mia. Um, <laughs> Left you off. Yeah, so and it was nice because quite often when I, was on, when I was on for my understudies, I was doing much less of the dance stuff in the show. Um, and because Steph was in the dressing room as standby quite a lot, I'd just kind of go up and sit with her in the dressing room while I wasn't on stage. <laughs> she used to dressing room number chill. one. If she was on, if, yeah. <laughs> if she was on, she was in dressing room number one. Otherwise, she was up in the rafters somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Too many stairs. So tell me about that. Was a full-on show. Forty Second Street, yeah, yeah, yeah it was. I loved it. Yeah, I mean, the spectacle of that show is just still now. I mean, it's so fortunate that we've had like the filmed version of mm. that done because actually, no one. I I I saw it with the previous cast before I started, so I'd seen the effect that that show has. Yeah. Whereas there were a lot of people who had done it from the original cast that never ever got chance to see that show. 
And I think, I don't know, there's, some, there's something about when you, when you have the opportunity to sit and watch it and see the effect of, especially th that end bit when the stairs come out and everyone's just pouring over those it's stairs. It's opening in the mirror. Yeah, the, the amount of people, the, the, the amount of, of effect that has on an audience. I think makes you feel because it's it's a show that you're. It was very easy, I think, to start to feel a bit invisible right. when you were in the ensemble yeah. of that show, um, because there's just so many of you on stage. Yeah. Um, whereas I think when you've seen it, you, I personally felt like such a big part of that big picture, because I kn knew the effect that it had on me when I was sat watching it, just seeing the sheer amount of people coming on stage. But yeah, it's a cracking show. It's like... It's just classic, isn't yeah, it? It's like old yeah. school. Classic. You can't... You just can't not love it. The story is what it is. There's <laughs> nothing happens, <Okay>. really. <laughs> <laughs> especially, it's a funny one, because for us working in theatre, the story essentially is the understudy went on. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Which happens all the time. Yeah. But then actually, to have made such a big story out of that and to... To, to tell that very simple story with such spectacle, it, it's amazing, it is amazing. Yeah. What colour were your shoes? You I had like lovely like blue teal Ooh, coloured nice. tap shoes in the opening and a vest. I was the mug they put in a vest. <laughs> Cheers uh, for that. You wore it well though. Thanks, <laughs> I tried. You take a bit, Sam Murphy wore it first, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Passed, passed it on to me. A new vest. <laughs> a new vest. After that, yeah, definitely Thank a new vest. Know, just pass it on, you know. Um, and then you went on to Folly. So was that straight mm. after? Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. That's yeah, we classic. finished on the we finished on the Saturday, and I started rehearsals for Follies on the Monday. So that was a real like. Uh, how? How? Were your feet not just dropping off by that point? Yeah, a bit. I but I think. In a weird way, when when you do some, when you do a contract like that, when it finishes and you're kind of straight onto the next thing, you almost you don't get that sort of debrief time yeah. from the show, um, w which is it's a weird feeling because it's not really until I finished Follies that I started to get the sort of that breather to go, oh yeah, you did you did that you did Forty Second Street and Follies, and it, I had that debrief all in one go then. Yeah. Um, I mean, you couldn't have had two more different pieces yeah. either. So starting rehearsals, like turning up at the National and starting rehearsals on that Monday was just... Uh, That's insane. Oh. Did I you have one of those like pinch me moments where you're just yeah, like... Yeah, 100%. Wow. 100%. And just the, the, way, the way the energy was in the room was so different. Because I'd come from a rehearsal room of such a high energy kind of we were straight in on day one of 42nd street learning the routines doing them time steps tap shoes on like and we just kind of hit the ground running learning that show whereas with follies the first week of rehearsals was all spent talking about who everyone was what okay. what everyone's kind of purpose was there so you kind of the approach to it was so different yeah. that you felt very you felt very integral to the piece, no matter how big your part was, yeah. um, which was really nice, a really nice feeling. And for you, obviously, you were understudying... Young Buzzy. Young Buzzy. Yeah. So yeah. Was, that, was that difficult to like, have your own track that you were Yeah, it was in a way. On and, then and I think especially the nature of that show was, was very much that the, the younger selves, the ghosts, were were always present if their yeah. older self was on stage they were there and when you when i had my own track in the show it meant that the whole way through rehearsals i i just couldn't keep looking to see where he was so for a long time i had so you kind of had to really figure it out yourself in yeah. a way in the understudy calls with watching the the video archive and and just trying to see what you could when you were off stage um, I mean, Harry, who played Young Buddy, was really helpful and always, like, was there if I had any questions about what he was doing. But the, the also the nice thing was that it wasn't hugely strict as to you had to be on this number at this count or whatever. You, you were able to go with your instincts a bit, even if you yeah. were sort of drifting around the stage watching your older self. You just, you were able, you 
you were encouraged to just go with what you felt if you wanted to come closer and listen in do or if you wanted to watch from a distance you could and that was really nice because you didn't feel so much pressure as an understudy to know exactly where you had to be at what point for anyone else's benefit kind of thing as long as you weren't walking into people because you were a ghost <laughs> you were kind of free and how was it revolve did you have any stumbles on it <laughs> uh, <laughs> the only one the only one i did have was in the understudy run when me and Sarah Marie were, were doing Young Buddy and Young Phyllis and we had practiced it so much but there was a point where you were on the still bit of the stage at the front and we were just sort of doing a nice quick quick slow dance together but at one point you have to step yourself onto the revolve and the revolve's going round and no matter how much we practiced it every time we got to it we would just take a massive tumble we we stayed upright in the cover run but we we definitely didn't succeed <laughs> we didn't succeed in making it seamless well because she stacked it as well later in the show yeah bless her was she, that your fault as well <laughs> I, I hope not i hope not she, she covered it really well though. yeah yeah and you were really good just it's just well the thing is for me I get it a lot when we do cover runs and it, the National was the first time yeah. I'd ever had that experience of doing like an open house cover yeah. run so the no matter how much they get up before the cover run and say to everyone this is a rehearsal stuff may go wrong people may need to stop and go over something you know no matter how many times they say that to an audience we as a company don't feel like that yeah, if there's an audience there you want to give of a, a, a professional polished performance um but having said that i am a big believer in for myself in that situation i do i do have to kind of go at the end of the day this is still a rehearsal yeah if i get it wrong i get it wrong and if i have to stop and go back on something i i will the amount of love after that oh my god was it was like, amazing yeah. so supportive as well and to have so much of the the cast coming in to do their own tracks to, yeah. to make sure we could kind of do as full a performance as possible yeah. it was so valuable but yeah bless her she fell and I just stopped and I just wanted to make sure she was okay yeah. because it was a rehearsal and yeah. I didn't want her to feel like everyone was just carrying on without her but it happens like it happens exactly. all the time and you know you've kind of got to just roll with it she and like you say she covered it brilliantly I thought yeah just absolutely. carried on and gave it 120% from then on. I was like, yeah, go on, go on, girl. So you talk about the cast. What was it like to work with those gents and ladies? Just, just amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I think just that, I used to just stand and, if I wasn't on stage, I used to stand and watch the monitor. Um, the, the bit that sticks out in my mind, obviously like Tracy Bennett doing I'm Still Here. Yeah. I used to watch on the monitor while I was getting my wig changed. And then, Janie D doing Leave You was just before we all came on for the Loveland and I had a bit of a break before that so I could have sat in the dressing room but I just I caught it on the monitor once and every night subsequently I just yeah. had to stand and watch it because it was so different every day as well and it, so many of the, those people they're so experienced they're such experienced actors actresses that they they just know how to to use their instincts if they're you know if they're having a bad day it comes through in their performance if they're having a good day it comes through in their performance and it it taught me a lot about actually there's no there's no reason why you have to do a carbon copy every night because if anything if you are you're not being true to yourself in that situation right there and then yeah you're doing what you've prepared for weeks and weeks in a rehearsal room which has its place totally but I think unless you can really respond to everything that's happening right there and then, then you're not really being true to, to the character that you're living as. I think that's, and that's what I was fascinated with watching, watching everyone in that show, because they just have it so instinctively. And then a bunch of you got together to do a cabaret at the Underbelly, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, Janie kind of, just mentioned Was it Jane about it. put together? Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think a friend of hers had approached her saying that they had this slot open and would she like to do something? So this was a week after you Yeah, checked. yeah. It was straight after we'd kind of finished the run of the show and it was called On Reflection and the premise was that we, we would come forward with 
a bit of a story or, or an anecdote about something that, and a song that represented us reflecting on a moment from our past. Um, and it was it was absolutely fascinating it was because wasn't it? Uh, yeah, and you, you. you really saw a new side to those people that you've been working with for yeah. all of that time. You just saw, uh, and some of the stories were really touching and emotional, and some of them were very funny. Some of them were to do with the industry. Some of them weren't, and it yeah, it was just really nice. And every night it was different because there were different. There was a different combination of singers every evening, yeah. so it made for a really interesting cabaret. Yeah, I loved it. Really well, very simple, but really well put together. I loved it, yeah. And now you've got your own cabaret. And my own cabaret, in yeah. November. It's kind of, it's been something that was, it's been brewing in my head for a long time. Yeah, because um, you did a cabaret with, at the Sing Easy, yeah. with the boys. Yeah, I've done a few now. Um, so you did Guys Sing Guys Sing Dolls, Dolls was the most recent one. With Ryan yeah. Anderson and Adam yeah. Dawson. Uh, which in itself was a brilliant. Yeah. A brilliant thing to do just because it's such a good opportunity to pick those songs that you never get yeah. to sing otherwise um, I loved it absolutely loved it um, but yeah so I, I kind of approached them with with my own concept for a cabaret um, so tell me about it it's called understudy jazz uh, kind of the name kind of came from the fact that for most of my CV I've put it down as understudy so and so so the, the premise of it is, it's kind of me singing songs from shows that I've done so far in nearly 10 years in the industry. <laughs> uh, and uh, I've got um, Joe Hood, who's a brilliant pianist and arranger, um, who I worked with on Top Hat. Um, he's written some amazing new kind of arrangements, sort of jazz versions of, of these songs. Um, so are they contemporary songs, like pop songs, or are they still? No, well, they're all well. They're all going to be songs. I mean, so there's so there's stuff from Evita, there's stuff from Top Hat and uh, American in Paris. It's, it's kind of just shows that I've done, yeah. um, and paying little tribute to the people I've worked with and to the shows themselves, the music in them, um, but in a sort of jazz nice. setting. Um, you do two shows. Yeah, so there's two shows two in the one evening. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it should be sort of just over an hour or so, I think, just as a starting point. And for now, it's just going to be me and Joe on the piano. Um, eventually, fingers crossed, we'll see how it goes and build it up into a nice little sort of yeah. mini jazz quartet or something. And yeah, it's just kind of, it, it's a it's a weird one for me because I've always kind of had the safety blanket of I love doing cabarets. I absolutely love it. Um, but I've always had that little security blanket of being kind of a part of someone else's gig or kind of a big group gig. Um, whereas this is the first time that I'm kind of presenting something myself as yeah. myself and kind of putting no one my- No hide behind. Yeah. Apart from my lovely guests. Yes. <laughs> who I can hand over to them for a little bit. So we mentioned one already. Yeah, Sarah Marie Maxwell, she's coming to sing um, and she's, uh, she's going to do a few of the numbers. I think um, she's going to do one of her, her own choosing, which I'm really excited about. Um, and then also she's going to help me kind of tell my story. Uh, um, she's going to be singing my Evita number because I just feel like it's such an iconic female story yeah. that I want her to sing that for me because I didn't want to do a rubbish job of <laughs> <laughs> don't cry for me. <laughs> um, and we're also going to sing uh, a song from Oklahoma together, which will be lovely. Um, and I've also got Michael Lynn coming to join us as well, who is the most brilliant tapper I have ever, ever seen. Um, he's quite well known around the sort of tap jam circuit. Um, he's incredible. And he, he did a couple of little um, jam nights when we were down in Chichester. And he just blows me away and he's so lovely he's genuinely one of the nicest people I've worked with um, so he's coming as well to kind of so is that the first time you met Michael on it's, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, I knew of him through friends and through people who've worked with him on other jobs that I'd worked with and but it was the first time I managed to meet him properly and so let's talk about that show because you've just Oklahoma. come off the back of it 
Yo. Oak, the helmet. <laughs> yeah. I loved it. It was brilliant. It I was loved stunning. it. I've been, I've been dying to do a, an old school Rogers and Hammerstein yeah. since I was in college. Because that's kind of where I always sat yeah. in my voice anyway. Um, and just as it happens, as soon as you start out on your career, you you start doing the exact opposite to what you <laughs> thought you were going to be doing. So there was me putting on tap shoes and <laughs> in tears coming out from top hat rehearsals. <laughs> but yeah, and I've been dying to do a show like that for so long. And I think to have the opportunity to do such a classic show, but in a very fresh, um, just a really new take. Jeremy's kind of, Jeremy's take on the show, Jeremy Sam's the director, his take on the show was so relevant and so yeah. it, it wasn't it was never twee and it was nothing like what previous versions of Oklahoma that I kind of grew up watching like the old MGM films and things that version there was never a moment that felt kind of oh here's the girls number it was and it was down to a combination of, of I mean Jeremy's vision of the show being very gun-led and hellfire and damnation and these were people who settled in America and were massacring people to yeah. make their own claim on the land so he it, it never he didn't want anyone to feel innocent as it were because um, there are some dark themes in there oh yeah hugely really dark hugely. themes um, and it was and, it, and also kind of Nigel Lilly the MD had had kind of free reign to Reorchestrate lots of stuff, so it was. We were, he was very able to work with Matt Cole, the choreographer, to really reinvent a lot of the stuff because the the original choreography by Agnes de Mille is it, it's still credited whenever you do Oklahoma yeah. because it was so iconic. But for them to have the opportunity to totally reshape how they were going to present the Dream Ballet and how they were going to present sort of. Judd's entrance and things like that. They, they, there were lots of things in the show that were played with and and reorchestrated and reimagined that just yeah, just really kept your attention. It kept you really engaged in the story. I loved it. I just loved that overall feel of the show. And what was Chichester like to be? I really like it down there. there. I really like it. We were very lucky with the weather. Yeah. Um, because when we were in rehearsals, it was just glorious sunshine mm. and everything is on site at Chichester so we we were rehearsing in the little the studios that they've got across from the theatre which is just the other side of the massive park so if you weren't in the rehearsal room you were just sat outside waiting yeah. to next be called in um, yeah it's just it's just such a lovely place and everything is so you can cycle anywhere so you could cycle down to the beach for the day or or kind of just mosey around town and there's lovely little parks and the cathedral and it's a lovely lovely area and really lovely audiences as well which was nice kind of makes a real difference i think people people have come to expect uh, uh, they have high expectations of, of stuff that goes to yeah. the festival theater now a lot of it transfers as well yeah it? yeah so they really set the yeah i mean it's you can see why as well because it's just there's so much Throughout the entire building, there is so much care and attention put into the production and the performers and, and everyone involved. Uh, as a building, everyone really works together, um, you know, as well as the crew and, and the people that in on the stage area itself. But you've still you've got everyone down in the office who are working to promote the show and to do touch tours and relaxed performances and things like that. It's a, you can see it's a real it's a real it has a real place in that community down there, which feels really nice. You feel very yeah. valued and, and an important piece of that big puzzle when you're there working. It's, yeah, I loved it. I would, I would, if I ever got the chance to work there again, I would do it in a heartbeat. Are there other shows that you'd like to go back to? Ooh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's funny, because I know lots of people kind of, once they've done it, it's a tick yeah. and you, you kind of move away from it. I, my biggest one is in American in Paris. Really? Because it, it just, 
it just feels like unfinished business to yeah. me because it closed it closed too soon it yeah. shouldn't have it shouldn't have left I can see why it left because it just it, it was such a big theatre big, to big fill yeah. and and even the stage the stage we needed a stage that size for the set yeah but if anything, the, the story is so intimate and so beautifully told that that house almost doesn't, it doesn't allow you to warm to it because it, yeah. it's like a stadium. It's amazing for, for pop rock shows and concert shows and because it, it's like an arena. Um, but that's one, I think because especially we, we had gone through the whole audition process for the second cast. I know there were lots of people who had, weren't in the cast already that were into audition for it were really excited they were in the finals and they were kind of really excited about potentially having the opportunity to be in the second year of that show there were some of us in the cast who were understudies that were auditioning yeah. for the leads and it and then obviously we had that we'd done our final auditions and then we had that news of the fact that we actually weren't going to have a second cast of the show and I just think for such it's such a beautiful piece that that taught me a huge amount about lots of things it was my first kind of big lead part cover in in town um so the the advantage is at least you know you're, you know you're going to be going on because we all have holiday yeah. times to fill and um so that taught me a lot as well as then working with such amazing dancers from a completely different background to me. We're coming from Royal Ballet and, and all of these amazing ballet companies from all over the world who all put in this musical. And seeing the, the discipline and the, the real determination that they had as dancers and seeing exactly how much you can, you can work through on a pain scale <laughs> was, was amazing. It, it really pushed me physically as well, that show, and it, it taught me a lot about how to take care of myself in this industry as well. And so I think for that reason, it's just a show that if the opportunity came again, I, I just, I'd, I would have to take it, because it's, it's stunning, that show is stunning, <laughs> and I, I miss it, I really miss it. And what else, what other shows, what new shows would you, what, what shows that you haven't shows? done? Oh God, there's anything. And it, have you got any dream roles? Yeah. My, my dream... <laughs> it's but. a funny one, because my dream role is more of a dream, not necessarily for myself. I'd love to do it, but I want to do it because I want my parents to see me do it. Oh. <laughs> I'd love to play Javert yeah. in Les Mis. Um, because I used to sing stars in, in singing competitions back home a lot, and it's my dad's favourite yeah. song that, I've, that I used to sing. So I'd love the opportunity to do that and for him to come and see me do that. Um, You're nearly old enough. <laughs> nearly. <laughs> I'm, de I'm definitely old enough. The cast is young nowadays, isn't it? <laughs> kind of you Very young. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably too old for it now. That's the problem. <laughs> um, the, 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 the thing I've been really fortunate with so far is that a lot of my jobs have been original productions or, yeah. or original London productions of things. So I've been really fortunate that I've been able, I've felt very creative in, in my career so far because, I mean, Top Hat, when we started it, was a totally original production. Yeah. And so, and every time we kind of redid it, there were changes and, and my job kind of changed with that over the four years that I was with that show. Um, Is that how long it was? On and off for me, yeah, because wow. I did. I was one of four people to do it from the day it opened to when we closed it in Japan. God. Yeah, could shake you up, could they? No, not at all. But I loved it. I absolutely loved that show. That was another one that just I just never felt like my time was done yeah. with that show. I think it was to do with the the covering. I I knew I didn't want to leave that show until I'd played Jerry, and then the very last UK tour leg of that was when I finally was You're given like the Steph cover. Harry, like, like, <laughs> like a dog with a bone, let it go. Kick everyone. Do it. But I think, yeah, I, I am like that in, in some yeah. respects. I think with, with regards to sort of roles and, and things like that, there's quite often I don't realise I'm going to love something until I start it. Yeah. And then it becomes a real, like, 
I need to, I need to get this to this kind of level on it. Yeah, I, and for, so for me that the dream job probably doesn't exist yet. Yeah, because it will be something totally new and exciting, and and you don't know if it's going to be good or not. But you just give it a go. And see. <laughs> And in the meantime, you've got Singing in the Rain. Singing in the Rain, yeah. Up. So tell me about this. So this is part of the 48-hour musical challenge. Yes, it is. The Showtime 48-hour musical challenge, which essentially... Which has been run for a few years now, yeah, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so this year we're and have doing, you seen them before? I've never seen them. Um, I've had friends involved yeah. with them a few times, and I've always wanted to chance. go and watch it. I've not had a chance to go and see it myself. Yeah, the now premise is that we're, we're going to start rehearsing Singing in the Rain on <laughs> Friday the 11th and then we put it on on Sunday the 13th. <laughs> so is that terrifying? I mean, y yeah, you're 10 yeah. years experience now. So. Oh, I, I, I'm absolutely terrified. <laughs> Every time I keep seeing on their Instagram, they keep doing this like countdown thing of sort of, and it came up on the 13th just gone. Yeah. It's one month to go. And I was suddenly like, oh my God. But the weird thing is because obviously like one month usually is a kind of a standard rehearsal process. For yeah. Something. Four weeks is, is a... Exactly. You can, you can put a show on in four weeks. <laughs> Where is with this? I know it's coming in four weeks and yet all I know it's, is the lines. I was going to say, so you were able to prepare, obviously you yeah. learned the lines, yeah. learned the music, yeah. but... We've been sent the script and the libretto. You have no staging, no blocking until the yeah. day. Will you have even met any of the cast? What, we have the cast social today. Okay. Um, so that's just, the first but that's time. that's a meet and greet. Yeah, just, literally yeah. just to say yeah, hi hello. to everyone. Um, and, but yeah, that's it. We, all the blocking, all the choreography, all the, the learning of the music with, a, with an MD is all within 48 hours. Wow. And yeah, it is. I mean, it's terrifying because it's such a, it's such a bucket list role for me yeah. to play Don. And the thought of only having 48 hours to because it's a show i know so well yeah. <laughs> i know what's coming i know that we're going to have to learn um uh good morning and i know we're going to have to learn broadway melody and i know i'm going to have to learn singing in the rain <laughs> i know all of those massive iconic numbers that gene kelly did are coming <laughs> but i don't i can't start them until two days before we put the show on <laughs> <laughs> Which just seems mad. It seems absolutely mental. And who are you doing it with? Uh, Tell me about them. It's a massive cast. Yeah. Um, I think, obviously, to kind of spread the workload a little bit, we have a massive ensemble. Um, and then we've got... But the main principles are you, Me, Peaches. Maria Coyne, yeah. And who I'm really excited to meet today. I'm excited to meet everyone. Yeah. Um, and uh, Sam Peggs is playing Cosmo as well. Which will be really interesting because, like I say, we're, I'm literally going to meet him today yeah. for a few hours, and we've kind of got to, within that 48 hour rehearsal period, become best friends, become lifelong friends. Um, so it's yeah, I'm just it's going to be a bizarre and mental process <laughs> with tap shoes. <laughs> like whose idea? Whose idea was <laughs> this? <laughs> it's, yeah, but I'm I'm really looking forward to it. Really looking forward to it now. Because the nice thing is, hopefully, people will come knowing that we've only had 48 hours. Of course, yeah. So if it goes wrong, it goes wrong. Yeah. That's my theory. It won't go wrong. You're a pro. You won't know it's gone wrong. Exactly. Because I'll just make it up. <laughs> it's the theory. There's a running joke in my family. Because whenever I used to do sort of dance festivals and, and singing competitions and things like that, my mum would be the only person that would have heard me rehearsing <laughs> over and over again. So I'd do it on the day and 90% of the time I would forget what I was doing and I would just make it up on the spot. So I'd sort of sing some sort of gibberish that sort of made sense to the song. And my mum would be the only person in the audience going, he's forgotten the words, he's forgotten it. <laughs> Did she not pipe up and like... She used to always tell me afterwards, she'd be like, you forgot the words, didn't you? <laughs> Thanks, mum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't matter. Your parents are very proud, you were talking about this earlier, weren't you? Mm. And they come to see everything. Oh, they're so supportive. They're so times. supportive. Um, and it's... It, when did it's it, so when did it start for you? Did you start as a kid? Yeah, so, yeah, kind of. I, I was really young when I asked my mum if, about dance classes. 
because I just used to dance all the time. Yeah. Um, but the only thing going. And this was in Wales. Yeah, back in Bridgend. Yeah. yeah. Um, the only thing kind of going in that in that area was ballet class. Yeah. Because I must have only been maybe four or five when when I first started, and I did that for a bit, and then kind of obviously word gets around that you're doing ballet and everyone in school knows about it and I just I don't know if it was the ballet class itself apparently I was quite bored I only got five in ballet because we were sort of just skipping around in a circle and I remember my mum saying that I would come home and she'd be like what did you do and I'd be like I'm skipping <laughs> I'd be totally unimpressed by the whole thing um, but then also it's that thing of you don't want to be the the odd one out and so I sort of left that and the only other thing was stagecoach. Right. Um, so that that was the alternative. So I started doing that um, in a local school by my house. And that was kind of when I was introduced to, because we did an hour of dance and an hour of singing and an hour of acting. So that was kind of when I got introduced to the broader scope of performing. Um, and I started that at seven. I did that until I was 14. And then there was a, an amazing local youth theatre that I used to go to and um, eventually did the National Youth Music Theatre, things like that, before kind of going on to knowing that I wanted to do it professionally. So go back to that young boy in Bridget. Because, I mean, obviously recently there's been a lot of talk about boys can't mm. do ballet. Yeah. And that's kind of raised its head. How was I mean, it for you, being that young boy asking for ballet lessons? Did um, you feel supported? Oh, by my parents, 100%, yeah. 100%. What about by other people in your class? Mm. Do you remember? Yeah, I mean, at, at the time, definitely, when I, when I was very young and still in primary school, it was, it was something that just used to be a real cause of, of grief for me. But it, you kind of... I kept going. Yeah. So I, it obviously didn't put me off. Um, the real change for me came when I was in comprehensive school because I went to I went to a school that was very focused on rugby there are a lot of Welsh rugby internationals that have come out of the comprehensive school that I went to so if you weren't involved if you weren't a boy and you weren't involved in rugby you kind of didn't matter to the school right. <clears throat> um, but it was kind of we used to do back in Wales we have the thing called the Ice Deadford which we used to do it every year at school and it's the same as the National Ice Deadford it's a, it's a festival of poetry and art and singing okay. and dance and things like that um, so the school version is slight, a slightly sort of pared down version of of that and people would get up and do recitals in Welsh and in English and, and in comprehensive they used to have a dance com competition within it and it was always done by the kind of like year 11 the popular girls in year 11 <laughs> they would always put on it was very mean girls <laughs> that's how that's how I always remember it feeling um, but like I said I was going to youth theatre at the time and there was one of the girls who was going to be doing the, the dance for our house who was also in youth theatre with me so she came to me in school and I was only I, I was in year 9 or 10 maybe I don't I don't think I'd gone to upper school by then. Um, but she asked if I wanted to be in their dance. And I was like, yeah, 100%, I'd love to. And I was always really nervous about getting up there and doing it, because I knew I would be the first and only boy <laughs> to be in the dance at the Ice Edward. But I did it, and it got a really good response and all of a sudden every year from then on you found like some of the lads from the rugby team would suddenly be in the dance I think because they figured out that if you had a boy in it you might win <laughs> <laughs> um, and it, it kind of started to change that in school I had a really supportive teacher as well I had two very supportive teachers back then um, Zoe Fender was a music teacher who still to this day is so supportive of, of my career and there was a lady called Faye Morick, who was a maths teacher at the school, but she is an amazing violinist. She had no time for any nonsense, and she always really supported the Ice Deadford. And she, she came to me and my best friend, Sean, about starting a dance club in the school. 
and she used to give up her time in her lunch hour with no extra kind of payment or credit for it she used to make sure that there was a gym available and you could come and, and start the dance club and as far as I'm aware it's still going on now oh, wow. which is amazing really you should name it after you <laughs> have a little like, plaque on the door <laughs> <laughs> Alan Harker but I do, I, it's, it's people like that that I, I think without them without people at first just asking me to get up and do yeah. it and without the support of one or two people amongst What's that thing Lady Gaga says? There are going to be 100 people in a room that don't believe in you, and you only need one. Yeah. Uh, and it's true, it is true, because I had, my, my family have always been supportive yeah. of everything. And then there were just kind of that handful of people along the way that whenever I was thinking about not doing it, were there to keep me, keep me going. Yeah. And that's, ama that's amazing. That's the thing that I remember more than I remember ever being ridiculed for it. It's just such a shame that people still get ridiculed for it yeah. now. You would just think, it's 2019, we've got bigger issues going on. The Amazon's on fire, who cares if <laughs> he's going to do a ballet class or not, do you know what I mean? It's a shame, it's a shame. But people, people will always fear something that's not normal. and. Unfortunately, it's still not seen as normal f for someone to compete as an athlete. Yeah. <laughs> Which is what it is, it's what it is. There's fit and then there's ballet dancing. And that's something I learned on American in Paris. I, I, I thought I was kind of at a good stage in my game and then I met the people who were coming from those ballet backgrounds. Yeah. And I had to learn really quickly how to keep up with them. And you know, yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame that people still have that in their head, but it will change. I hope it will change. Of course it will. And if it doesn't, we're going to do it anyway, so <laughs> we may as well shut up about it. <laughs> That's my feelings towards it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, remind us again, so if they've got a spare 800 quid, they can come and see you on a cruise ship. Yeah, yeah if you want to, come on Floating Festivals. <laughs> but before Floating Festivals, there's October the 13th is uh, Singing in the Rain at the Adelphi. Which, which won't cost you 800 Which won't cost you 800 pound. And um, all the money goes to the, which charity is it? It goes to the Louis Body yeah. um, Dementia Society, which is an amazing charity anyway. It's one quite close to my heart because my nan had dementia oh, really? um, not Louis body dementia because there are different yeah. kinds um, but I know kind of firsthand the effect that yeah. dementia has on on not just the person but the all the people around yeah. them um, so it's a cause that I, I'm really you know I'm really happy to be contributing to um, and everyone in the production is giving up their time for free and it, the musicians, the actors, everyone there on the day is doing all of this work to put on a, a West End show for free, yeah. um, which is I th which I think is just amazing. Um, so that's on the 13th. Uh, I think the tickets, uh, the tickets are available online. You yeah. can go to... It's LWT, is it? Yeah, it's, uh, the Android Weber Theatres have it. It's at the Adelphi. Google Singing in the Rain Adelphi, I'm sure it'll come up. Yeah. Um, and then it's the cruise. If you, if you want to come on a musical theatre themed cruise, meet your parents. Please do come and meet my mum dressed as Norma Desmond. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then November 10th is uh, Understudy Jazz. At, and at they're quite reasonably priced, aren't they? Eight pound a ticket? Yeah, well, I just. Really? Well, yeah, I just thought I'd. For me, I want to do this not necessarily for the money. Yeah. I, I want to do it give back yeah well I want to do it to see if just to see if people want to come <laughs> just to see if people want to come and see it and, and will there be any difference between each show or is it just the same show it should it should be kind of the same thing um, it, it depends well, they can stay around if they want oh my god again. yeah get a ticket for the 7.15 and if their seats <laughs> stay for the 9.15 <laughs> double bill yeah it'll be fine um, but yeah, it's, it should be the same show. I'm not planning on cutting anything from the first one for the Is second one. Got no guests one. skipping off to do it. No, else? no, they're they're kind of they're tied <laughs> in for the evening now. Um, Amazing. Yeah. Well, good luck with it all. Thanks. Up there. <laughs> Thanks. Wait for you to slip. <laughs> don't, because I probably will. I probably will. I will support and cheer. I don't know how they do in the rain. That's the mystery. It'll be cold about. 
I don't know. Uh, will there be rain? <laughs> Can we have rain for one night? <laughs> They might just give all of the audience super soakers. I don't Do you know. Reckon? Well, quite possibly. <laughs> Actually, I shouldn't say that because that might be the idea now. And yeah, I don't, just, I'd rather it really be projection. <laughs> so I can't slip over. You'll be fine. You'll be grand. 